comes from my world. What a flop! A full house against quads? Oh, come on! Please yeah. don't bluff, but you bluff also. <laughs> you have nothing. <laughs> It's a four-way all-in with three players at risk. And we get a triple elimination. Got an EPT first. That is awesome. Yes. Living the dream. And Popal has done it. He has won his second EPT title. I only got one question. Hello everyone, welcome to Prague and welcome to the European Poker Tour. It's been a while since I've said those words. I am James Hartigan, sat alongside me, Joe Stapleton. Hello, my babies. Yes, here we go with the first major EPT festival in more than two years. We're coming into day two today and we expect the bubble to burst today. So world famous bubble coverage just around the corner. Okay, so these are the chip leaders coming into day two. Jack Sinclair from the UK has the biggest stack, nearly 200 big blinds, nearly 318K. Uh, one player I want to pick out in the top 10, Joe, is Daniel Devorah, someone we know very well, a Canadian super high roller reg. This is his first live event in more than two years. Daniel and live poker have been remarried. And Devorah does have nearly 150 big blinds. When the action starts, those blinds will be 800, 1600 with a 1600 big blind ante. That's right, everyone. Hashtag embrace the squeak. It's back. A unique feature of this particular stop on the European Poker Tour. So let's talk about the lineup at our first feature table. The stage headline, Joe, by a former EPT Prague champion, a former World Series of Poker main event champion, Hossein Ensan. They always say the first person to show up at the table is the worst player. I don't think that's the case here. I see Hossein. You know why he's early? He's an older gentleman. That's what they do. He's the second biggest stack at this table. Martin Cabral, one of the locals. Uh, the Czech pro is the biggest stack. We've got two other EPT finalists we should highlight. Jimmy Guerrero, Yoni Jokominen. Jimmy Guerrero, a finalist in Monte Carlo in 2016. Yoni Jokominen, uh, one of the Finns in hats at the Barcelona final table in 2012. And we can see the players coming to the stage, taking their seats at our feature table, and very soon we'll be getting the action underway. Cards will be in the air, and that is the trophy they'll be playing for on the sixth and final day. Cards, faces, eyeballs, real names. <laughs> this is hand number one of day two. A reminder, the blinds 800, 1600, with a 1600 ante posted by the big blind. Is there possibly a bigger fan of the EPT than Rusi here. He's got the Chop Pot t-shirt. It's always coming sevens. Unbelievable. I mean, this is how you know the EPT is back. All the memes in one hand. <laughs> and this is Quentin Rusi from France opening under the gun plus one with pocket sevens. Hmm? First hand, here we go, guys. No mask, no, no. Yeah. It's last day. Come on, no more mask. Day three, no mask. <laughs> Martin Cabral, 7-6 of clubs in the cutoff, and looks like he's going to call the raise, which was to 3,500. By the way, Quentin Rusi, qualified online for this event, has just over $220,000 in live earnings. Uh-oh. First hand here, ace, queen of hearts in the small blind. Not just the first hand of the day. Yeah, the first hand of the tournament for Yanni Yakamain, and that is a 30K fresh stack. Let's go. Yeah, yeah, let's just get it in here. I mean, he's going, I don't know how I'm going to chip up today, but this looks like a pretty nice spot to put in the shove. 30K going in the middle. He's got the triangle of death next to his name. Yeah. 
Okay, so pocket seven's with the decision here. Yeah, so just to clarify, Yoni Yokuminen has a starting stack of 30,000 chips, as Joe just mentioned. He bought in at the start of day two. Very first hand, wakes up with ace queen suited, gets it in. I mean, this seems a little crazy, Nick, but it's kind of the play, right? Yeah. Starting late. Yeah, absolutely. He decides to make the call. Yeah, and we are going to race town. Unbelievable. Very first hand back, ladies and gentlemen, and it's a classic race underway at the feature table. Like the King's Casino versus the Poker Stars Arena, one of these two things has a slight mathematical advantage. I have to disagree. That's a fair fight. It is. Ouais, je suis en tape ceiling. Vas-y, ramène-moi. Euh... Ramène-moi. Euh... Regarde, c'est sur YouTube. Well, sevens holding. Is Yoni Yokomainen going to be one and done? One hand and out? I don't know. These late regers, though, you know what I mean? They're like, yeah, you know, I like to max late reg these things. I just think it's the best way to play. Wake up with a clean flip right to, right to kick off the day. I mean, he'll return to Finland a hero. <laughs> looking good for Quentin Rusi, the online qualifier. Yoni Yokomainen looking for an ace or a queen on the river to survive. Eight is a blank. <laughs> Rusi wins the pot, and Yoni Okaminen pays 5k at the desk, takes his seat with a 30k stack. Very first hand he plays, all in and out. Welcome, sir. I said, welcome. Okay. Welcome to the... Welcome to the... Not yet. Decides to make it... It's a few French. It's a few French. open to 3,500 from under the gun here with the pocket five. Check, check. No, ça va pas. Ça va très bien. Faut mettre les cartes comme ça, vous les jeter. Dans les... Hey, you look French. Please give it a quick fold. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Merci beaucoup. Once there's more than one French person at the table, English only, out the window. <laughs> Uh-oh. Hossein in the membrane, and San in the bran. Yeah, he's, uh, he's glancing over the table here. He's trying to figure out how much his opponent is sitting with to begin the hand because it's going to influence the way he plays. Ace king off is basically always just going to be a, uh, a straight three bet, but if he feels like his opponent is stacked in a particular way, he can decide to play it slower. If his opponent is also quite deep like him, you know, lowering that variance a little bit from out of position. And San checks. Morovic bets. 9,400 in the pot makes it 2,500. Yeah. So it's quite a small C, a C bet, and I think Ace King's got to come along every single time, especially given the fact that they've kind of underrepped their hand quite a lot here. Yeah. And San does. Queen on the turn gives Ensan the straight draw with a 10, as well as the two over cards. So still a considerable chunk of equity, 30% on the turn. Okay, pocket five is undeterred. Oh, but a little pause. Makes it 5,600 to call. So I like the way that Hossein is paying attention to what Ravich is doing, um, you know, looking for those sorts of tells. I always feel like if I'm so too interested in what they're doing, that might be a tell about me, though. Yeah, it is a tricky one. He does continue here again. I think he is sensing a little bit of weakness. We did see that, that slight slowdown there from the oh, see that turn. And Ace on the river gives Ensign a very strong holding. Get your flaming barries out, ladies and gentlemen. Mr. Greenstein makes an appearance. What if he just, like, blocker bet the river, like, real small? 
Nope, makes it a check. <coughs> I think this is going to get checked. And five. check, check. Ace King is going to be the winner. Pocket eights for alt. I mean, num num. Three decent hands here. Queen Jack of Strawberries, Ace King of Diamonds, the Snowmans themselves. And we are going three ways to the flop. Yeah, you see Alt considering putting in another bet, you know, with Rusi flatting in the middle. Sometimes you can get rid of that player. In this case, I don't think it would have worked. Oh, it's top, top for Rusi, but it's the flopped flush for Morovic. Don't take my head, analyze or anything. I'm not going to use my phone. That's 4,000. 4,000 is the bet from the player with 95% equity. And how does Rusi respond? With a pair of kings, ace kicker, that's a call. I mean, the flat in that spot right, right after Morevich it is going to be ace king a lot it's going to be king queen a decent amount of the time so yeah. I, I think i just really like that bat yeah. well eight got out of the way heads up to the turn and now morovic has a lock on this oh, that's such a nice turn though isn't it guys like you don't want to see another heart you don't want an action killer Now, does this count as a value bet and a semi-bluff because of the straight draw? <coughs> or do we just... Oh, Joe, you've misplaced your hand rankings again. Look. Yeah. Flush beats No, I know it beats a straight, but you can still make both, can't you? <laughs> and a call. Oh, this is going so well. No action killer will probably get him some more. The three of clubs might be one of the most brickiest cards ever. Now you can fear the full house, but that would be a little bit nitty. Yeah, I mean, I think a lot of players might play their sets a little bit faster, right? For fear, for fear of the hearts, you know, for, for, for fear of future hearts falling. That's a lot of Fs. I really hate how this is not opening because of yeah, the mask. Yeah, yeah, because of the mask. Really stupid thing. Oh, there's the shove. And it is all into call for Rusi. And yes, this is a call and it's all over baby situation. Oh, it's such a nice river for Ace King. You're much less likely to run into a set when the board pairs here. Or what was a set on the flop, I should say. I can't help but just sit here and hope that the guy wearing an original, dare I say vintage, everyone loves a chop pot hoodie, finds the fold. I would root for a fold here just because going broke to the flop flush, you just feel already claiming so, the so wrong. It does. And you you really got to put yourself in your opponent's shoes and go, is he just going to barrel off here with, like, the eight, like the ace of hearts? Is he just going to go to town on me? And at this stage, in this tournament, yeah. 
And that's really, you know, sometimes it, it, it just comes down to, is he really going to put three barrels in here with a hand that I can beat? I know you're blocking Ace-King, Nick, but do you ever think that this is like Ace-King and you're uh, potentially getting no. blown off a chop? No, I don't think so. I think if you've got Ace-King, you've got plenty of business betting, maybe two streets to protect your hand from the hearts, but on the river, he makes oh. the call. Calls all in and is out. Online qualifier, Quentin Rusi eliminated. GG, he says, GG. in the vintage hoodie. I got it's covered up. I mean, it makes sense he's wearing a hoodie and a coat because that was a bit of a cooler. I think we may be coming to the end of the session. We're hearing a lot of squeaking now. Hashtag embrace the squeak. And a few players at the feature table not playing this hand, already out of their seats. I do think we will be changing feature table during the first break. So we're going to have a new lineup on the main stage when we come back. So if I'm not mistaken, it looks like we're blind be blind here. I haven't had a chance to see Martin Cabral's cards just yet. So we're playing just with the nine tray off for now. There it is, ace five off. And there is an ace on the desk. Cabral already ahead and now way ahead. Quick checks on the flop. The nine feeling like they've got showdown. The ace feeling like they want to try and get more value. And it looks like they are going to get a turned bet. Of course, Oikonomu has paired his nine. Now two pair for Cabral on the turn. And okay, that is a break. race. Let's go for a break. I do the cheap race, and let's go for a break. <laughs> Give me money. Be less. A little bit more speech play before we wrap it up. So far, Okonomo. Okay. Also just, you know, love him or hate him. It's tough to play against somebody that's this flippant at the table. Like, it really does confuse you. Yeah. I think a lot of people don't want to admit it, but it does get under people's skin as well. They tr they're like, yeah, you know, I, I just play my game. I don't worry about what people say. But I think a lot of people do play worse against him yeah. for that reason. And I, and Even I don't if you're see, not tilted by it, it's still just sort of befuddling. Like, yeah. it's just confusing. Yeah, yeah What does this mean? And it's going to merit a call on the turn. He is getting additional value from his two pair for that reason. Like perhaps. how many players are you going to make this call against with just a nine here? Yeah, absolutely. And a bad nine at that. Four on the river, and this pot is all Martin Cabral. I think he knows that his opponent isn't going to be particularly strong here given that preflop action. But, I, you know, what's, what's the bet size here, guys? What do you reckon? 32K in the middle. What's the size to try and get a crying call from a nine, a queen? You know, probably a five is a little bit ambitious for any bet size. So you're probably just tr sort of targeting specifically a nine or a queen. Cabral thinking how much value he can extract on this river. This will be the last hand before the break, by the way, as Cabral fires in a chunk of change. Might be the last hand for Oikonomo. Is it enough to put his opponent all in? Period. Yeah. 90K and Oikonomo's only got 41,000. So it is all in to call Ooh. with just a nine with a really poor kicker. He's really tempted. He really is. I fold. Fold Stop tonight. showing. Stop. I guess you'll see on the live stream if you really want to, but. I know what you're really excited to ask. Who is going to be on our new feature table? We have got Czech pro Wojtek Rudzicka. We also have a World Series of Poker main event finalist, a player who won the record-breaking Eureka Poker Tour main event just a few days ago. You may know him better as Papo MC. Alejandro Lococo is at our new feature table. Plus, 
global poker award-winning blogger Masato Yokosawa, who's made the trip from Japan to be here in Prague. And always, always the coolers. Jack's open, but we've got kings in the hijack for Valentin Marius Cristea. Fewer than 20 big blinds. And the Lex to re-raise. The three bet is 11 and a half. Sure. Sounds about right. Uh, Ace Jack offsuit in the small blind. Doesn't look great after the action no. ahead of you. No, it doesn't. You're absolutely right, James. I think I think Aluri, you know, might might have uh, swerved one here. Because that pre-flop action means that he's going to be able to get out of the way in a dominating situation quite frequently. But we'll see. You're right, Marginov. I sound, stand corrected. We are at the 2K blind level, not the 4K blind level. So, yes, it's closer to 40 big blinds than 20. Apologies. Thank you, guys. Wow. We actually had a chat pro Saturday contribution that was actually legitimate. I mean... I got I got nothing but time for the chat pros. I love them. Oh no. He's fooled us before, James. This is not an alluring hand, Alluri. <laughs> very good, very good. He's slow slower the com slow rolling the commentators very often here, but I like it. Kings again. Consider. Oh! Did you hear that guys? Kings again, he says. How does he know? Not just a rap god, perhaps also a poker god. Do you think I should, I was going to say treat, but maybe another way of putting it would be subject Papo MC to my rendition of the EPT rap? I absolutely should. Uh, you absolutely should, excuse me. Yeah. I if think... you're volunteering, then you can do it to you at. <laughs> uh, no, I, 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 I still can't do it, even now without an audience. Lococo, check, check. Race hell. Oh, Pocket Kings deciding to check the flop here. And I like it a lot. I wonder if Lococo gave away a little bit of information by, you know, questioning whether or not he had kings. Is he kind of saying, well, I've got a smaller pair and I, and I know that that would be a cold deck. Christea obviously has the kind of stack behind where he can fire turn, fire river, and get plenty of value still. I think the check on the flop is basically means you have to mandatory call the turn every single time as well. Yep. Okay, 10,000 apiece going to the river. The eight of clubs. Kings have a lock on this. How do I make this look as if I don't have kings? All right, would kings do this? So 48k to start the pot. And he's going to make it 15.5. So about one third, something like that. I know Papo MC is on a bit of a heater right now, but this is the year of Romania. That is a force that no man can combat. Look at him though. He's he, he he's in he's in the zone. He is capable of making this fold. He absolutely is. He he got the vibe pre. Does he go with his gut? I'll be impressed if he folds Jack's here. I would be too. No. I completely understand the call, yeah, but yet yeah. he's not surprised to see Kings tabled by Christia, right. who's gonna win that not insignificant part. Oh, little smile under that mask. Good sizing. I 
And on to Cristea in the cutoff, ace 10. Oh, hashtag embrace the squeak. Embrace the squeak, guys. Just, you know, it's like James will, will recognize. I've lived in Brighton for a very long time, and in Brighton we have lots of seagulls. A lot and the of first seagulls. thing people say when they arrive is, wow, don't those seagulls drive you mad? Eventually you just don't hear them anymore. Hashtag embrace the squeak. I can handle the squeak. I can't handle the gulls. <laughs> seagulls. Seagulls. <laughs> Stop it now. <laughs> Let's go, Albion. <laughs> Lurie with sevens in the big blind. The raise is to 4,000. Twelve thousand five hundred is the three bet size. Oh, hello. Tough spot for race ten, honestly. Um, Looks like it was just a call. Going to a flop. We are indeed. And it's nine nine five with two spades. Yeah, let's not discount those spades. I know Cristeo's only got one, but two of our yeah. cards in the back door spades. It does add considerable equity. And you got to expect your opponent to see about his entire range here, right? He's going to bet with most of his good hands, if not all of them, and he's going to definitely bet with all of his plus, right? If he was three betting light here pre, he's going to continue here a bunch. So, what's the size though? Does he go bigger or smaller? Twenty seven k was the pot before the bet. He decides to go for So I hear seven seven thousand. So a little bit less than three X. Uh sorry, one third, excuse me. Really interesting size, though, James. You know, like, it's not huge compared to the pot, and I feel like Ace-10 with the Ace of Spades probably wants to float here a lot. Yeah. So, and, like, you know, depending on how confident you are that you just want to try and get these sevens to showdown or, you know, if you want to continue barreling turns, I think we're going to see a float here quite often, at least. And that's looks like, that looks like exactly what's going to happen here. And I think that size kind of lets these hands in, but who knows? He, he, you know, it's not to say that he doesn't realize that he's value betting at this stage either. Oh, that's a really nice turn for the sevens, though, isn't it? You don't say. That's not to say the sevens are always good, but you know, thinking about good turns, turns that don't change the complexion of the of the board too much, like a king, for example, perhaps an ace, something like that. Any overcard really doesn't make you feel too comfortable. The turn nine is a pretty Pretty nice one. So it was 41k on the turn. Uh, uh, excuse me. Cristea decides to bet uh, 16,000. And just to clarify, this is day one of our coverage. Day two of the tournament. We'll follow this through until Wednesday of next week. So stay with us for the next four days to follow. I mean, after two and a bit years, guys, of watching pretty much exclusively online poker where you've got minimal time bank and everyone makes quick decisions. Yeah. We're now 
faced with people taking their time. One thing I will say is that from the start of day three, the shot clock comes yep, into play. I, was, I, was, uh, I saw a couple of comments, and I was going to bring that up myself. Absolutely. Does he just ship the turn? Does he just go, if he's got it, he's got it. Ooh, action shots here. Love it. Maybe he's disconnected. <laughs> the old live DC. Wow. Gives it up on the on the turn. Was not expecting that. Cristea very well played, takes it down. Is it still close to four in us? Because of COVID or uh now it's better than before, but mm -hmm. it's possible to travel there now. Now it, I have an idea. I, I'll, maybe not. Maybe it, it not. Used to not. I'll be it. flying now to Philippines and then to China, and it's pretty easy now. Uh, now. All right, That's Papo and C. Japan has been closed. Jap Japan all is the still, time, still likes uh, more strict. Yeah. Calls. They, they didn't open to anyone. I think if I want to travel to off. Japan tomorrow, I can do that. Yeah. Not you good news for Okusawa. No, no, no. <laughs> like I think I think it's possible. Yeah. It might be possible. At least it'll be hard to spike a king. Wow, what a deal. Ooh, baby. Ooh. What a dealer. Four ladies Q, on Q, the Q. Unbelievable. Three ladies. What a dealer. So on. Bet's 5,500. Lococo in. Coco in, Yoko out. Oh, the deuce on the turn. <laughs> oh, no. Oh, no. Oh, punished. Punished. Really? Uh, what are we going to do about the Chop Hot song? Are we no, doing it? We're doing it. Yeah. Okay. Maybe this you. I don't imagine the Coco is going to go anywhere. Now he does have the heart draw here, of course. Yeah. Oh, Ooh. look at that. So this is not going to be a chop, no matter what happens. They just go, should we agree to chop now? Yeah, right? <laughs> it's just chop, guy. It's, it's such a weird one, though, guys, right? Because, you know, any pair here, of course, is the boat. So the flush is pretty much irrelevant. But, <laughs> I, I mean, anyway. it's also kind of, well, it is also kind of unusual usual for um, Silouan to not have, uh, or to have a pair that he doesn't want to bet on this river, unless it's maybe like, I don't know, pocket eights and he's scared of the 10 or something like that. But even then, I'm not really sure. I mean, this is an inspired play, isn't it? Yeah, I mean, uh, what's the size here? I can't quite pick it out. I mean, you're free rolling. What was yeah. it, 100? 105 by our count. Wow. That is. I'm with Blanca. Yeah? That is a really interesting bet size, though, huh? Oh, finally, some not peanut steak. Welcome, sir. How are you? Thank you. I'm fine, Andrew. Finally, some Tell not peanut <laughs> steak. Especially now. Wow. You guys are brothers, yeah? <laughs> you are brothers? Look at wow. this. Ever heard of this guy? <laughs> Who's this yeah. guy? Ramon Colelius. Yeah? Winner of the Poker Stars <laughs> Players Championship for $5 wow. million. Dollars. I was there. I was there when it happened. They're in the Bahamas in person. And this guy lifted one of the Very biggest tough. trophies I have ever seen in my entire life. Nice.
And also one of the biggest prizes I've ever I've ever witnessed one actually IRL. Follow Ramon. Seven and a half. Let's go. Okay. Okay. Everybody happy. At the feature table now, Selawan raising under the gun with Queens. Nice trick, by the way. Nice trick. <laughs> Like that really is some kind of he did it on purpose, minor still, controversy I so, I here, guess. I guess. Okay. Good luck. Flatting with 5 4 or forced to raise? I'm not sure. Sorry, Nick, go ahead. Three nope. betting, yeah, forced to, forced to raise. We need to do no, I was just, it was a very side comment. I was just going to say the, we do have quite a few French better. ambassadors <laughs> and team members of Team Pro here Spaniards. in Prague, and they are like such a strong and friendly and outgoing and very talented <laughs> group of people. And uh, when you arrive, and uh, you know, they just give you such a warm <laughs> welcome, so friendly. And truly outstanding poker players and absolutely relentless. They're, they're in pretty Spania. much every single oh. game going. No? Who is this now you're talking about? Spaniards? The Spaniards. Uh, <laughs> okay, then we don't need to do Gave you a rough reception when you yeah, arrived here? Uh, no, 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 not at all. Not at all. <laughs> I think I think you're right about that. I think that it was funny because was the official uh, in Argentina. Spain was, was uh -huh. new to poker when I was up first on the scene. And they were kind yeah, of the butt yeah. of a lot of poker jokes, and now they're no, absolute uh, crushers. Boys. So yeah. they're top boys. It's in the language, grazie. And girls, grazie. you're uh, your pal, absolutely. Anna Marquez yes, in that indeed. group. Yes, indeed. Yeah, no, good friend of mine. So Kalilis does catch a piece here, and has like been raised. It. Boom! 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 This pot is getting huge, my babies. Calls the 15K after being what I assume was check raised. And the deuce on the turn gives Cornelius more outs. One of them will look very bad to sell on. The rest of them will be very bad for sell on. Wow. Yeah, he wants to make it more spicy. Yeah, Selawan not going for the check raise this time. Forty-five thousand. I mean, Kalilius has really got himself in a pickle here. I mean, it, Joe, it's not completely out of the question for Ramon to, like, actually turn his hand into a bluff Do now. something nuts, yeah. Yeah, because he's going to have he's gonna have the sets. He's going to have... He's going to have some two pairs once in a while. I don't know, probably not. A little bit more often, I think. Just sets, a call. Sets are probably the thing that he's most likely to represent here if he is going to turn his hand into a bluff. Huge river coming up. The ace of spades, that is a straight for Kalilius. Now, I said one of those outs is going to look pretty bad in Selawan. That's the ace. That's the no longer disguised hand. Now, Kalilius going to be tough to put him on a straight. Not hard to know that the ace is a bad card for you, especially the ace of spades completing the flush draw as well. Selawan checks. Now, Ramon is sitting with the effect of nuts. I realize it's not the No, you got to check nuts. this back, man. It's runner, runner, spade. <laughs> Come on. You can never be too careful. <laughs> is this for the table? Hmm? Is this for the table or is it yours? No, it's mine. Oh. Who makes an open ender? Can I buy one? Hmm? Can I buy one? Who does that? <laughs> There's 161K in the middle, people. Gulp. Serious gulp. Oh, man, it's chunky. 120. 120. So gross. So gross for Selawan. Hmm. Just a gentle fold. Take 
huge pop for Ramon. One of the biggest we've Wasn't seen, I think. Yeah, absolutely. Ramon lands with a splash. Mister, was it a block? I don't speak English very well. I Ah, you don't speak English? No, no English. No, no, no. no. Ah, so you are brothers no. at the end. I'm going to no. try this one if Cabrello no tries to talk to me at the table. <laughs> <laughs> okay, onto the blinds. Small blinds in. Settle on with fours. And the big blind, Papo MC. Parappa the Rappa. That was a great game. Coming along with Queen Deuce suited. Two clubs on that flop. That's what I spy with my little eye. Flush draw for Lococo. Four is winning for now, it seems. Yeah, I don't think he's going to be going nowhere. Unfortunately, Cristea's outs is just an out at this point, isn't it? Oh, no, hold on. Doesn't need an out right now. That's what makes it. That's why. Is ahead. <laughs> is ahead. It seems like they're behind, but it's a 50-50. It's one of those. Fifty-one at forty-nine. That's what the computer tells me. Computer says four on the turn. That would have been a set of fours. <laughs> Why do these people keep folding? Don't they know there's a turn coming? You gotta chase. Yeah. So this is definitely an interesting situation for the Coco because unless Cristea decides to fire a bullet on the turn. It's probably a good shot that uh, Lococo can turn his hand into a bluff, unless he just makes the nuts. No big deal. Making the nuts, making the nuts. You got to go for the check raise here, right, Nick? Just kidding. Just kidding, bro. When I ask you like that, it means I'm just joking. All right, so 33, uh, 33 and a half K in the middle right now, and Lakoka decides to make it. How about like one third? What do you think, Joe? A third pot? Oh, it seems less than a third to me. Teeny, My, teeny, oh, tiny. He's I'm actually not, targeting I'm not really a perfectly. math guy. Oh. <laughs> Whoa, has he picked a size which merits a raise? <laughs> Again, Lococo attacking things from a from a unique perspective, yeah. and uh, again working out to his advantage. Cristea yeah. falling for it, hook, line, and sinker. Double check. Do I have the nuts? Yes, I do. Yep. Lococo picks this amazing blocker bet size that looks super super weak. Obviously, he's going to get a call from some like really small pair, so it's got that benefit. But also. You're looking weak, and you're giving your, your opponent the opportunity to turn their hand into a bluff, and the ace of clubs looks really scary to a lot of hands that might have continued flop and turn. Sure. So in this situation, finding the perfect line to get some more chips in the middle, he's sitting there with the absolute nuts, and he's like, okay, so now how much do I make it? Do I think that he's actually strong, or do I think he's got something that I want to try and just eke out a little bit more value? I mean, the only other strong hands that could make this raise are other flushes, right? Right. Worse flushes. Yes. Yeah, exactly. I mean, unless... I think it's hard to get called by anything. Obviously, you still have to raise. You have the nuts, but... I mean, I, I think against this size on the river, people might get brave and raise two pair or something like that, but that's not necessarily a combo that's going to call another raise right. again. So you're going to try and target some of those two pairs, or you're going to try and target the flush, and I think it's probably better if you go for the value against the flush because that's what you're going to make way more chips on, right? Virtual all-in, insta-fold from deuces. Well played, yes. Papo. Yes, let's go, mate. You did? Masato is the boy. He's the boy. He is the guy, the superstar. Oh, Alejandro Lococo, otherwise known as Papo MC, oh, wow. already won a massive event this week, the Eureka Poker Tour main event. 
Lost a fairly big pot here at the feature table, but is once again stacking chips. These players are going on break, and here are the chip stacks from the featured table. Ramon Colelius hitting one of his many outs on the river, drilling, cracking queens. Cabral, Yokosawa, all still sitting pretty. Valentin, Marius, Cristea, the table short stacked. The year of Romania. And we are headed to a break. More when we return from the Poker Stars EPT European Poker Tour from Prague. Back in just a bit.